In this lecture, I want to give you an overview of location targeting settings, sort of how to think about them, some of the concepts, and in the next lecture, we'll go back into the Google AdWords, the Google Ads uh, user interface, and we'll configure our location settings in real time. So first of all, only you know how you need to configure your location settings. I can't teach that to you. Nobody could actually teach that to you. If you're a local business and you only service certain areas, then obviously inherent in your name or the type of business you are, you don't service certain areas and you do service certain areas. So it's an absolute must. Location settings is an absolute must for local businesses. You might be an international business and you might ship to certain types of countries or whatever it may be. So you have to first start thinking about where do you ideally want to show your ads? I recommend looking at all your historical data. And again, I'm referring to the non-obvious things. The, if you only service a 30 mile radius around your headquarters, if you're a local company, um, then it's obviously you service, you know, you, you focus on that area. Um, but I'm talking about, let's say you service the whole country. Um, let's say you, or you service the whole world potentially. And that could be a service business like we are, like, we, like we're like we service businesses as we're a digital agency and we service, we have clients all over the world. But yet if I were to advertise, I, we don't really run any advertising campaigns, but if I were, I would be very specific where I service based on the types of clients I want to attract. So historical data, like your CRM, you could speak to your boss, you could speak to coworkers, you could just think about um, what's been, what, what feedback have you gotten from, from customers in certain locations. You could use Google Trends, google.com forward slash trends to find out certain searches or, or certain products that are trending in certain areas or certain services. Typical guidelines, major cities will be more expensive. They'll also have the most volume, right? That's something which is like this like classic push and pull. Like you wanna like, you wanna always try to get the cheapest clicks, but the, the more expensive clicks will be in the areas that are more competitive. And the reason why they're more competitive is because they work better. Always remember that higher CPCs, higher costs per click is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, and I tell this to clients all the time, it's usually a good thing. Higher costs per click mean that more people are advertising on this keyword in this place at this time on this network, and they're willing to pay more. And the reason why they're willing to pay more is because they know that their advertising is working. So don't run away from high costs per click. Double down, get involved, you improve the efficiency of your landing page, improve your quality scores, right? Stay in that game because you'll eventually capture a profitable share of that traffic. Use the Google Keyword Planner to see where your competitors are bidding. That's a really, really good tool. I'm gonna to show you how to use the Google Keyword Planner. Um, it's a really fun tool to get ideas for campaigns, to get ideas for ad groups, but also to see um, where, com where the competition is getting their traffic from. And you'll also use tools like SEMrush, I'll show you how to do that as well in, a, in future lectures. 20% of the budget will always be experimentation that might not be based off of hard data. It might be based off just your desires and your goals and what you, where you wanna be. And 80% of your budget should be spent on campaigns that are being optimized over time. And of course, in the very beginning, when you don't have any data, if this is your first account, then it's 100% experimental. Another thing to realize, after you've created your, comp your campaign, you can modify your geo-targeting at any time. You could change your location targeting, you could change your location targeting settings, you could remove countries, add countries, remove states, radius targetings, all those types of things. And, and very, very importantly, you could decrease and increase the bids for certain locations. You don't necessarily have to exclude a location. And this is one of the most important factors in advertising. It's super, super, super important. A lot of times you'll see enormous gains when you're able to increase and decrease bids. So I might be bidding $5 per click, but when it comes to people in um, Houston or California, I wanna bid 50% less. I, had, I can add a 50% negative bid adjustment, which means that I'm only willing to pay $2.50 in those locations. And that's a really, really great way to stay in the auction um, in all locations that you service, but modifying how much you're willing to bid based on other factors, based on, based on your historical data of which locations are most successful and which locations are less successful. Another trick which is important, and this is not something which is applicable to every single client, but it's applicable to a lot of clients, is that you should use geo-targeting to exclude competitor locations. Ultimately, this could be a nasty game. Like, your competitors, especially, in, and I've seen this a lot in local markets where clicks are extraordinarily expensive, margins are low, uh, plumbers, trucking companies, um, electricians, locksmiths, gardeners, uh, pest control companies, local insurance brokers. In each of those previous examples that I've just listed, we've seen cases where clicks could be 30, 60, 70 dollars per click and competitors will be clicking on ads. So it's really terrible. It's not a good thing. And it's very hard for Google to prevent that. Google will give you a credit when there's fraud. If Google sees 
lots of clicks coming from the same IP address really in rapid succession. But even if it's the same competitor, the same IP address that clicks on your ad four times throughout a day, that's not necessarily fraud by Google's system. So what you could do, and what we typically do for local service businesses as clients, here's one of our uh, little trick of the trade, is we'll get a list of the top 5, 10, 15, 20 locations, actual addresses of our competitors, their offices, their main headquarters, and we'll exclude our ads a one mile radius around each of their locations, right? That way, if anybody's sitting in their office and they're doing a search for the products and services that you offer, then the, your ad won't show up and there'll be no opportunity for them to click your ad and run your bill up uh, without having a chance for a conversion. Let's just do a quick overview of the features of location targeting. You could do basic exclusions and inclusions. So using Google's location targeting, I could, I could specifically target certain locations or I could target all locations and I could specifically exclude specific locations, okay? Those are your basic exclusions and inclusions. Using the advanced search feature in AdWords, you're able to um, use an actual map and target or exclude people by country, region, city, or zip code, postal code, right? So it's, you can get really, really seriously focused in a real way. When you use radius targeting, we've, we've been talking about radius targeting, you have the option to target anywhere between a one mile and 500 mile um, radius. You, so you can't target 0.2 miles and you can't target 800 mile radius. Location groups, which used to be places of interest, airport demographic groups, those were removed. So if any of you are coming from the previous Google Ads or the previous AdWords interface and you're now migrating to Google Ads, um, this is not an option available anymore, unfortunately, when you're setting up your campaigns in the, in the advanced settings section. There's a new feature in Google Ads um, that was not available in the old version of AdWords called Pin Mode, and I actually really like this. If you don't have an exact zip code or you don't have an exact address, you could use pin mode to just drop a pin anywhere on a world map and choose your um, radius targeting before you drop that pin and Google will target that location. So again, you can customize the radius of that pin by dropping it, any, by dropping it anywhere on the map and it'll be a, a radius of a one to 500 miles. Just like the other types of radius targeting, you can only target locations in pin mode. You can't exclude locations in pin mode. If you want to specifically exclude a location, you have to have the address or you type in a city, state, postal code, etc. Why do you think that is? Well, by now you know the answer. Google doesn't want to make it easy for you to exclude locations. They want to make it easy for you to include locations. You'll get more impressions, spend more money, and waste more money. Um, and that's basically an overview of the features of location targeting. In the next lecture, we're going to jump into the Google adds user interface, play around with the actual um, targeting for our fictitious campaign that we're building for Poppin, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I will see you guys in the very next lecture. Cheers for now.